What's going on everybody? It's your boy KuKobi149 and today we're going to be reviewing the Nerf Ultra Amp. Let's get into it. Included with the blaster is the magazine inserted into the blaster, six ultra darts, and an ultra amp instruction booklet. This blaster also needs six AA batteries to function and are installed as shown. Just kidding. I never thought I would have to say this, but a note for anyone installing the batteries, put this one in first, and then this one. It's a little bit unconventional. It's just so hard to get the freaking batteries in here. of the blaster. So this is the Ultra Amp, or the Ultra AMP, and it exclusively shoots Ultra Darts, uh, being an Ultra Blaster. Uh, it shoots it out of a new magazine. This is the Ultra Magazine, or I think the standardization of the Ultra Magazine. It loads just like any other N-Strike magazine, and it, you put it into the blaster like any other N-Strike magazine. Um, it is a six round uh, magazine. Uh, it is compatible with only two magazines to my knowledge, the AMP magazine and the Faro magazine. It is not compatible with the Ultra Speed magazine. That one is mutually exclusive to that blaster. But yeah, loading it's pretty simple. Uh, then once you have a magazine loaded, you can rev the blaster with the rev trigger once you have loaded batteries. This requires six AA batteries, and as seen earlier in the video, loading the batteries is a pain. I hate loading batteries into this thing. But once you've done that, it is possible the blaster does rev very loudly. It has a very high power, shooting 90 to 100 FPS in that range, which is the ultra par, and it is semi-automatic, so once you rev it up, you press the trigger once to fire one dart, you don't hold it, and it um, it's not fully automatic, it's semi, so like this. Pretty simple. Uh, other things to know about this blaster, uh, there is a stock attachment point in the black. Back, not black. Um, this blaster does not come with a stock, but it is compatible with any Nerf and strike stock you own. It's just a typical stock attachment lug. Uh, on top there is also a rail. Uh, it also does not come with an attachment, and the sight up here, which does look quite cool and has little details in it, blocks the sight whenever you put one on. So you really only put up one up there for detail reasons, but other than that, there's no point doing it. I should also mention there is another version of this blaster that is identical. I think it has uh, red paint instead of gold paint, um, and it does come with a stock. This version of the AMP does not. So if you get this version, you do not get a stock. Uh, I think that one's region locked to the red version. Uh, but anyways, another thing to note, this does not have a lock in it, meaning that it, though it will lock into the blaster, when it's up, you can still rev the blaster and stick your fingers in the flywheel and whatnot. Like, right now I'm revving the blaster and I'm just feeling the flywheels. That's what she said. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Um, very dangerous for little kids. They might hurt themselves. Uh, Ultra Blasters aren't really meant for little, little kids. So, um, just be wary of that. Uh, most Nerf Blasters have a lock, and I think there's a, they're, like, supposed to have a lock. But the AMP doesn't. So, um, if that matters to you, then now you know. Uh, up front, there's also a foregrip. It's quite comfortable. This blaster feels nice and comfortable. I'm actually a fan of the rev triggers and the trigger on the Ultra Blaster. Some people aren't, it's their preference. Uh, but if this is very similar to most other Ultra Grips and Ultra Blasters, uh, you're getting the same performance. Uh, the only difference is that it's flywheel and it has a magazine. Um, I think the only other things I have to note is that there's a rail attachment here, or sorry, not a rail attachment, a uh, sling mount here. And um, some complaints I do have is um, this remove magazine button, the magazine release, is really sticky and doesn't like to work. It feels like you're breaking the blaster trying to use it, and so you can't just like lightly tap it figure forward and pull it out. You have to like press it really hard to pull out the magazine. That might matter to you, might not, but yes, it's a very hard magazine release. And uh, one other thing to note, when I got my blaster, there is scratches. 
I'm trying to get it, if you can see it in the camera, I don't know if you can. Uh, in the glass, that's not part of the design that I cannot smudge out. It's built into the glass and it looks really annoying. Um, I'm actually really pissed that it's like that, but yeah, there's scratches in there. So that might matter to you, uh, the fact that there is scratches that are in the way. But anyways, that is a review of the Ultra AMP. If you're interested in this blaster, I found mine on clearance um, at a The Bay, which is really funny. Uh, but you can find these at most hobby stores, Walmart, etc. It's a pretty common blaster. It is an ultra blaster, so if you don't like ultra, don't buy this blaster. It doesn't offer anything different that the other ultra blasters don't. If you're interested in this blaster, but you want to spend less money, then I would recommend you check out the Ultra 2. It is also a flywheel powered semi-automatic blaster that uses six AA batteries. However, it is rear loading and does not use a magazine and it has the same capacity as the base version of the AMP. So, so you might want to check out the Ultra 2. Uh, but other than that, thank you so much for watching this very quick review. I try making it as quick as possible for you guys. Um, yeah, the Ultra AMP doesn't really offer much other than the fact that though it looks cool and it functions well, it's an Ultra Blaster. So that really is what it boils down to, purchasing it. Again, thank you so much for watching this video, and you guys have a fantastic day. Please comment if you want to see more reviews like this, and have an awesome day. I already said that. Bah!